Hello, CQ. Hello, CQ. This is 2 Emma Talk Rittle Testing. This is 2 Emma Talk Rittle Testing. Tonight, we have a most marvelous thing that's going to happen. We are going to receive Rome, that famous Italian tenor, that famous Italian tenor, what's his name? Gridlico is going to sing Non Puto Ferrari Pantissimo, which being translated means um, it's very difficult. CQ, the concert's ended. Sad Wales, the heterodyne. You must soon switch off your bells. I must soon switch off. I'm hectic, but I think we're about there. We're about ready to go live. It's 6.45, people are starting to arrive. We have 150 tonight, and it's 100 years since Peter Eckersley, just 100 yards that way, did his thing. Um, tonight, the Northumberland Theatre, in uh, my courtesy of uh, what I knew as Ritual Agricultural College, now Ritual University. Uh, we've got launching the new book, The Centenary of British Radio Broadcasting, and uh, it's the start of the weekend of uh, celebrations for 2MT and of course the birth of BBC this weekend, followed by an excellent curry night hosted by Chelmsford Science and Dream Society on Monday night. So, so far so good. We fought the IT and the IT won, but we've got a plan. Uh, we fought the weather and the weather won, but we've got a plan. Um, no plan survives first contact with the enemy, but as Eckersley always said, the show must go on. Uh, it's a family trait, Eckersley. Uh, are there any offspring? Uh... It is, yes. I'm really pleased that I've spent the afternoon with uh, Caroline and Alison Eckersley, who are both his granddaughters. Um, in fact, I was pl uh, privileged, if nothing else, to um, show them the hut up at Sanford Mill this afternoon and uh, got a tour. And I've, so I've already done this lecture once a day. I enjoy that immensely. I took some great photographs, uh, which Steve will introduce in a minute, including having them at the microphone calling Hello CQ. This is two of the top riddle testing. Uh, they're, they're great. They're fascinated with their grandfather's uh, career uh, and the career that I've not yet started to talk about. So um, this is his career in 1922, leading through to the, the BBC years. After that, the 1930s and indeed now the 1940s, he had an equally amazing career. A young man, a, a life most lived. Let's be honest, you know, fighter pilot, shot down Egypt, pneumonia, Brooklands, developed airborne wireless, developed uh, aviation wireless for the new um, civil aviation um, business. Invented, defined the art of British broadcasting with Two and Top at Riddle, and then for eight years single handedly built the BBC. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. And then he went on to do amazing things as well after that, but that, as they say, is for another story, another time. But he wasn't meant to be BBC, was he? In that straight I jacket. Think, come up the time, come up the hour, come up the man. John Reith. Presbyterian, gaunt, six foot four minister. John Reith needed an Eckersley. He needed a genius, he needed someone who could break the rules, he needed someone who could make broadcasting work. Perhaps by 1928 or 1929, he didn't need him so much because Eckersley, from being the only engineer, the chief engineer, now had a department of 730 brilliant engineers. So his time had run, but no. Eckersley and Reith, especially when they took on Churchill and the government during the general strike, which led to the BBC being independent of government for the last hundred years. So yeah, they, they, they were like chalk and cheese, but they needed each other. And, they, and, and as such, they gave us everything we needed to know, our mass medium, mass entertainment world. Any surprises tonight? <sighs> only the fact that I'm still standing up. <laughs> and only two hours to go, so... Um, let's see how it goes. This is two over top riddle closing down.